Now, I'm going to draw another, the same type of scroll as this, but with shorter. See, I've extended these here. They become more streamlined. I, I did it on the other video. Now I'm going to shorten these here. See, there's a longer stem here, long stems going around here. And because this scroll doesn't spiral as much as a larger scroll here. You see, some of these scrolls are tighter. You see, they're tighter all the way here. They haven't got a lot of extended at the beginning like this, you see. There's a shorter head there. Whereas this here, and it's the same roadway, as I call this the roadway or the pathway, all the way around here. It's the same distance, you see, there. Whereas this here, on this one here, you see, is wider. Maybe I was out of distance on this video, but uh, I'll reiterate again. You see, this is much wider. So now this is one we're going to concentrate on, and I'm just going to draw these shorter. So I start here, and instead of coming right down like I did with these others, I will make them shorter, you see. So they come in and touch, so there's not very much uh, cutting away between these. That would be your dark area. And so I'm making them come here, and they're shorter, you see. And it's a shorter step ladder. You see, they come around here. Um, yeah, and they're tighter, you see, they're going to come up here more so. So I start here, instead of starting back and making it narrow there, it's wider here. So you've got a wider leaf. Okay, so, so in here, so it's more mm, square, shall we say, rather than rectangular. It's square up here, but it's elongated here. This just shows, really, how the slight alteration in a scroll can make it different. And of course, different engravers, through sometimes a fault of not realizing it, this is what they're doing in another, way, another sense. And as I mentioned before, as long as it looks good and professional, you can make what you like of it. And if the public, the collector or whoever wants to buy your product, is pleased with the result, well, that's the thing. There, I think some people may have to be educated into what is good scroll or good engraving um, and make a difference from mediocre. There's a lot of mediocre stuff out that people, you know, they, they buy and they still like. But it's like all things, once people become educated and know what the real thing is, I would suggest that you learn the best and so you don't have any problems <laughs> in the future, shall we say. Um, it's just my reasoning in any case. Uh, there's a lot of mediocre stuff out there and some people, just because you make a mark in a piece of metal, they think it's uh, fantastic that, that you're able to do it. But if you can make that mark into something that is desirable and beautiful at the same time, there's a big bonus in it for you. You have a lifetime of self-contentment, and the same is if, if you get good at your product, you'll always get customers. Because some of these things can be competitive in the marketplace, if, the, if people start to want it, and of course, 
they will always, not always, of course, it's, it's, it's the factor of cash, money, how much the thing costs to, to do. But um, some things, as I say, it's just as easy to do a thing well as it is to do it poorly. The only difference is having the knowledge and the experience of producing a thing. You see, you must practice, like all things. Majority of people that I'm talking to now learn to drive their car. They get into it, they don't know anything. They use kangaroo juice, you know, the car jumps all over the place, you don't know where the gears are. You look down at your feet and uh, that's what you do. It's like dancing, you trip over people's feet. Then, now, after years or months or whatever training, it's according to how fast you learn, it's second nature. You don't think about it. You just go into gear, you go into there. Of course, that's if you've got an automatic car, which is not helpful. But, but in most cases, you still have to learn how to steer and negotiate certain things. And this is the difference. This is what I'm talking about. You negotiate distances. There's a distance between that car parked there and that person coming there. Same as with your scroll work. You see, you've got your distances. And you gradually start to think in a different way which I'm trying to express you know I try to simplify things and make uh, make everything simple as I can and try to put it into everyday terminology to make you think okay and I dislike to a degree too much technicality technical talk about something that is a visual thing like this if you're a mechanic or you're an engineer and you need you need tolerances and you need all these degrees of angles and things like that of course you need it you're an architect you must have them but a lot of this that we're teaching is a natural form you know yeah. 90 degrees, 50 degrees, 740, yes, if you're drawing a roof of a house and you get all your angles right through the roofs or your steeples or things like that, maybe that's, that's easier, you see, because you're learning. But this is just curves. And at the same time, it's the rhythm, it's like a music, it's like lots of things, you see, you're doing this. And you're enjoying what you're doing. Once you get the knack of it and that rhythm coming here, you begin to enjoy it. I mentioned before that this pen that I'm working with makes a mono line, very similar to what your pneumatic engraving tool will do. If you just keep it ploughing the field, going down the furrows, it will do the same there. But what you actually would like to, this to do with your gravy, you start with a lighter pressure. You still have to have a decent cut, but then you can put the cut deeper here. You can slightly twirl, turn the graver over, which will make a slight flange, but it would widen the cut. And when I was an engraver on guns, we cut for the black. We weren't bright cutting bright and uh, of course if the gun has to be going into the fire which it has to do to be hardened you couldn't put any blacking in the background you had to do it so that it, the engraving itself retains its own it either with steel it patinates into the background and makes it dark you see but that's what you did. And of course, when we were engraving, all we had was an oil stone. And we put a drop of oil on my fingertip and just rubbed it in. So it's the background so you can see what you're doing. So that's how that went. You see, it's just gone around like so. And uh, we haven't made, oh, maybe this one, I was talking too much. <laughs> maybe I did streamline this a bit. But this is the, the way it will go.
okay? Here, there, I go there. I spoke a little bit and made it larger. I could have made another two or three in there if I wanted to. But it, it, it's still a, a, a scroll that you, I'm teaching you to do. And, of course, then, what you're going to do is you're going to get your graver and either cut lines across here like that to make a grey effect, or you're going to close in all the lines and cut this away into the black. But what I've actually done again is see these little crescent moons, all these little here, these backgrounds, these negatives, have a nice shape because you've got the curve in it. There's nothing, no wobbly or anything in them. And the little knobs, you can turn them into, shall we say, little sharper ends. It's what you're going to do. But this is my way for my second lesson in how to create a scroll. So I'll leave you with this one again. I've already done this, but it's just to simplify it and to show you. I'll get in and show you another one soon. Well, good luck, and it's Happy New Year to everybody.